Hello and welcome to 2020 Flight Simmers. Today we are at the Bergen Airport in Fleesland. I probably mispronounced that in uh, Norway. So uh, today's episode is on the DC-6. In series with our DC-6 episodes, uh, today we're going to be doing the before taxi check, the taxi check, and the engine propeller run-up check. So if it's your first time joining us today, I'd ask you to go down there and hit that subscribe button, tick that little bell, and smash that thumbs up. Uh, you'll get notified on all of our future videos. It really helps out our channel and lets me know that I'm doing a good job at what I do. So, without further ado, we're going to hop in the cockpit, we're going to teleport to engines running, and then uh, we're going to get to our checks. Okay, everyone, now that uh, we've got everything started up and we are ready to uh, start our before taxi checks. Um, so the first thing uh, that's on the checklist here uh, for our before taxi check is the boost pumps. Make sure that all of our boost pumps are in the off position, and they are. Our engine selector switches, which is right here, want to make sure that's in the off position. Uh, we're also going to make sure our GPS is set in GPS mode, so we're going to head and set that right now. Next on the uh, checklist is the hydraulic pressure and quantity, so we're going to uh, check the hydraulic uh, reservoir here, and then we are going to check the hydraulic pressure, which is right over here. So it's right where we want to have it, about 25, 2600 PSI uh, over there. Uh, ground equipment is uh, clear left and right. The four taxi checks are complete. All right, so the next uh, checklist that we're going to do First, we're going to ask for a pushback here. Go ahead and turn our e-brake off. So now go ahead and uh, set our parking brake again. So make sure we don't roll anywhere. I'm going to make sure that all these are rich. They are. Okay, so we're going to uh, move on with our taxi check. Uh, we just checked our brakes, so that's done. We're going to make sure the flaps are set down to 20%. So we're going to go ahead and move that flap handle down right here, down to 20%. Then you can also verify it right here up on your gauge cluster right here with your flaps. Okay, so now that we're down to 20% on our flaps, great, we got transponder uh, in standby mode. So let's go ahead and make sure that that's set down there. We're just going to turn it in the on position. Uh, the next thing we're going to do is check our car heat, which are right down here, these little blue knobs, and they are all off. All right, so the next thing we need to do is our electrical check. That isn't working. All right, so the next in the sequence here would be an electrical check. I'm going to show you how to do it, but for some reason, uh, it is not functioning properly here. Um, so I don't know if it's because of the SIM update or not. Uh, the first thing that you would want to do is come over here and select generator one. Uh, these are your generator one, two, three, and four amp meters. Um, and then this is showing your voltage um, on each generator. So we would select generator one, you would come up here and turn off the generator one switch. Uh, when you would do that, then you would come back over and then check the generator one voltage. Well, as you can see, it's still got voltage and it's still got an amp draw. Uh, they should not have, this shouldn't be an amp draw here anymore and we shouldn't have any voltage and the amp load should take on the rest of the generators. Uh, so that's what's supposed to happen and then you would go back and you would turn your generator one switch back on and then you would verify voltage and then verify that it's now spreading that load again and then you would repeat the procedure for the remaining engines but it's not working so we're not going to run through that whole procedure. Okay so uh, the next part in the sequence would be the run-up procedure. So the brakes are set, the engine instruments 
temps and pressures have been checked. So we can go down here and just monitor all of our temperatures and pressures. All right, so the first thing we need to do with the prop check is the prop governor check. So the prop master lever would be in full forward, which it is. Note the RPM limit lights that are on are blue. Select the engine master switch to three in auto. All throttles set to obtain 1600 RPM now. So we're going to move our throttles till we get to about 1600 RPM. Okay, I would say that uh, we got them on 1600 RPM right now. So now we're going to go ahead and look down below here. We are going to turn our prop master lever all the way down. Full decrease. And then we're going to take note and make sure that all the lights go out and then they turn blue. Alright, so we're going to select our engine master switch to manual right now. And then we're going to toggle the prop full increase RPM switch. So these RPM switch is going to go full forward right now. Uh, note also the RPM, yeah, 1200 plus or minus 50 RPM. And that's about where we got. So 10, 11, 12, we're right around 1200 RPM. So all of our lights are blue. We selected manual and now we're going to put each prop switch into the increase. We're going to note that all of the blue lights are going to go out. You're going to hear the RPMs rev up, and we can watch them now all increase. Now, what we want to observe here is that all of the RPM, all the RPMs come back up to 1600 within 10 to 12 seconds. And then we also want to make sure that our blue lights come back on. So now what we want to do is go ahead and put these switches back in the full decrease mode. All the lights should go out and then we're going to wait about 10 to 15 seconds and the RPMs should start decreasing back down to around that 1200 RPM. So we're going to wait for that to happen and all of our lights to come back on in blue. Alright, we got them in blue. We can go ahead and put these back into the neutral position right now and also take note of our RPM. So. Now that we've got them back to normal, uh, we go ahead and take our prop master lever switch and put it all the way forward. Now, nothing should happen. The RPMs should not increase. So uh, that worked out good. So we're gonna go ahead and put us back down in the full low. Go ahead and switch our switch back to three. And then we can go ahead and put full RPM increase all right, so we have come back up to 1600 RPM, and that is good. Okay, so the next check that we're going to do here is the manual feathering check, and that is going to be right here. So we're going to go ahead and start with uh, number one, and uh, basically all we're going to do is we're going to push in on the feathering button and then we're going to come down and monitor our RPM once we get the RPM to drop 2 to 300 RPM we're going to come back up here and pull this little button back out so let's go ahead and see what happens all right we've got our drop pull it out now we're going to do that for each each engine so we're going to go ahead and do number two we have our drop We're going to go ahead and do that for number three. We have our drop. And we're going to go ahead and do that for number four. We have our drop. All right. So the manual feathering worked on all propellers, all engines. So now that we checked the manual feathering, uh, the next thing we need to do is turn on the ADI switch and uh, we also have to check and make sure we have 27 to 32 PSI coming in our water pressure. So we're gonna check and we're gonna go ahead and flip all of these water pumps on. Go down here and check and make sure that we have our pressure that we need, and we do. So we go ahead and shut those off now. 
All right. Okay, so the next procedure we're going to do is we're going to test out the auto feather. The auto feather is put in place so that you do have an engine failure on takeoff that will automatically feather that propeller for you so you don't have to worry about that uh, while you're doing your takeoff as well. So we're going to move into the auto feather procedure. Oh, and by the way, if you have any questions throughout this entire process, go ahead and pop a question down below in the comments section and I'll get right to you. And again, if this is your first time watching the series, I highly recommend you go down there and hit that subscribe button. You don't want to miss out on the rest of these videos. All right, so the first thing we need to do is turn our map uh, or get our manifold pressure and turn it to what our barometric pressure is outside, your BM. BMEP should be anywhere between 110 to 140 PSI. Then we're going to go up to the top here. We're going to flip our auto feathering down to reset and then in the on position. And then we're going to come down here and bring manifold one pressure down. Uh, as soon as we get down below 70, then what's going to happen is it should feather engine one then this feather switch should be in the pushed in position and illuminated to let us know that engine one is feathered. We can go ahead and pull it back out and raise our manifold pressure back up. So let's go ahead and try that out and see what happens and let's reduce our manifold pressure on one down. All right, you notice the RPM drop way down, okay. So the feathering system works. You'll notice the RPM has started to increase we can bring us back up to 30. All right, and we wanna go ahead and do that for each of the engines. So we'll go down here and hit reset, back up into the on position. We're gonna check out number two right now and see how that works. Number two, we're gonna bring down, once it hits below 70, there it comes. It came on, we're gonna go back and check our RPM. The RPM is starting to increase now. Perfect. So now we can go ahead and reset us one more time. Back up in the on position. We are going to test number three. And it has worked. So we're going to go ahead and pull that back out. Notice the RPMs on number three start climbing. And the very last engine would be number four. We're gonna go ahead and reset our auto feather switch again and back up to on. We'll go ahead and bring down number four. All right, auto feather is working. Go down and we'll notice the RPMs that started to increase on four. Okay, so once you get finished testing the system, you wanna make sure that you go ahead and reset and keep it back in the off position until you're ready to take off. So now we can bring all of our RPMs back down to about 1,000 RPM. And uh, that pretty much takes care of the uh, run-up procedures and the before taxi procedures. Uh, next is gonna be before takeoff and takeoff procedures. So thanks for joining us today at 2020 Flight Simmers. If you have any questions, go ahead and post them down below. I'll get back to you right away. Uh, if you have any uh, comments about anything, go ahead and put them down below. I always welcome you to hit that subscribe button, tick that little bell, and smash that thumbs up button. It really helps out our channel and lets us know we're doing a good job. So thanks for joining us today. We'll see you on the next one. And as always, keep the blue side up.